Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Dr. Batron. Now, everybody's been talking about how the whole world is silent regarding uh, what's taking place in Gaza. And Egypt seems to be the only country that actually is really seriously trying to... I mean, of course, a lot of international uh, aid is uh, flowing into Gaza, but Egypt is the only country treating the injured Gazans, trying to receive 40 to 50 people uh, daily uh, from the injured. The Minister of Health ordered that people who need prosthetic limbs, they will they will be receiving them, the blood donations, people who need operations uh, elsewhere, they will be flown to Cairo and other uh, big major hospitals as well. How much does this reflect on Egypt's, not, political, not just political role, but the, the heart that Egypt actually has in being uh, a strong humanitarian advocate for the Gazans? As we discussed a little bit previously, Egypt's effort, whether it be it humanitarian, um, from a humanitarian point of view, political point of view, um, um, economic um, even point of view, um, because Egypt is integrated within the issue. Uh, but I will, I want to a little bit disagree with the, the statement that you mentioned in, in, in your opening question, into it's the only country that's helping. On a country level, Egypt might be the highest ranking country in the world with its mm -hmm. 5,400 5, tons of mm -hmm. supplies as, uh, being supplied for, for people in Gaza. But I'm, I was amazed to look at the news in the past few weeks and seeing um, um, uh, demonstrations in Washington, in London, in um, various parts of Europe mm -hmm. of regular people around the world protesting saying, protesting and saying in peace mm -hmm. and saying that's enough that's enough for our leaders that's enough it's enough blood it's enough bloodshed we need to sit together people need to sit leaders need to sit and to solve this mm -hmm. and i believe those demonstrations happening everywhere in the world even from young people within ivy league universities in the states saying that that's enough. You've mm -hmm. never, you, you, you would have never imagined that you would hear such voices within universities of the United States, even on the same cause previously. Mm -hmm. So this is a real progress of the cause, a real progress of the liberation of the people, if you will, mm -hmm. because this time it's really happening on a totally different level. It's the people of the world, it's the youth of the world, it's the youth of the Western world before the Eastern one saying enough is enough. We don't approve of the way our politics is taking our country. And this mm -hmm. is, we are the people of those countries. So there is a movement of the world pushing world re leaders towards, if we can, optimistically call it the liberation of the people of mm -hmm. Palestine, the living in peace in order to build a country that has been ravaged by war, by a 70 year, 75 year war, and looking, hoping, praying very hard with a lot of faith for an optimistic future. Mm -hmm. So there is something that's happening. I believe all of this will help Egypt's integral cause, uh, integral component of this cause, mm -hmm. whether be it on a humanitarian level, because if, uh, the Israelis would not allow hearing whatever it is that's happening in the world, they had mm -hmm. to concede. So I don't think that it's only, it is mainly our Egyptian mm -hmm. effort, but also it's uh, um, the people of the world helping out on the cause. Yeah. It's the East and the West. It's the leaders of the East maybe uh, putting pressure on the West a little bit more. It's Antonio Guterres, and mm -hmm. for the first time you'd hear, um, uh, why, why would he take such a position for the Gazan people? Mm -hmm. It is not the Gazan people. He's taking a humanitarian position for other humans in the mm -hmm. world. It is not about a label, whether they are Palestinians or, or Israelis. We are against death and torture mm -hmm. and killing of children whether they, whatever nationality they are in. Mm -hmm. And it is not a religious war. And mm -hmm. it is not, it is a political war yes. with economic 
uh, roots yes. as well. So all of this are, are changes mm -hmm. towards yes. optimism and optimistic resolution of the well, situation. Well, these changes and a lot of people are being critical regarding the, the public voice and the public opinion uh, being voiced within the international community and uh, the major ca uh, capitals as well. Y yes, you've mentioned uh, the, the foreign uh, relief aid that is being sent, but also people are criticizing the, the leaders of uh, the international community of really lacking the speedy response and responding and complying to the calls of the people uh, on the street. How soon do you think those leaders, not just, I mean, it wouldn't just be enough sending aid and convoys, but also they need to change their political stance it's, regarding the issue. It's not about aids and convoys mm -hmm. anymore. Aids and convoys are important, but it's not about aid convoys yes. anymore. It is about the disruptive change that has happened with it for the cause itself. Mm -hmm. And this is what I believe um, 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 making leaders take um, um, a more... Um, a calculated or um, a less than speedy response mm -hmm. because the regular speedy response that used to happen in the last 30 40 years mm -hmm. uh, will not go, is not going to do it will not do on a political level yes. whether uh, on a political middle eastern level mm -hmm. or on their own political levels internally mm -hmm. so their regular responses will not do people are much more aware of the palestinian cause people are much more aware of what's happening in in gaza people are much more aware of the atrocities and the war crimes that ha ha that has happened in the last three uh, three and a half weeks mm -hmm. so it's not that something we can hide this anymore so this is very important so there is change disruptive mm -hmm. change that world leaders of many countries who were totally in support of the, the Israeli side are now thinking twice before speaking or else they're going to have a demonstration on their streets yes. and it's going to be their political careers on 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 the you know on the, on line, the line here mm -hmm. so the, the, the change is there disruptive change is there uh, for the cause disruptive change um, um, for the future of the region uh, for the uh, political um, uh, ex experiences. For the first time, we are looking at the the Israeli mm -hmm. situation yes. uh, with you are talking losses, 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 and and failure of um, um, intelligence, uh, military, uh, so, uh, political. So you are seeing problems within yes. uh, the other side. Yes. So definitely. this is this is all changes. Mm -hmm. You are seeing uh, international armies within the, the Mediterranean mm -hmm. being present there. Yes. And this is not for um, a, a small strip between two conflicting countries mm -hmm. or, uh, no, it's much more than this. It is really on a global level, a disruptive change for the economic, political yes. future of the world and not only mm -hmm. of the region, in my opinion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Batran has mentioned, it is a bigger problem which needs bigger and faster change as well and hopefully that will be taking place within the next few weeks if not even earlier hopefully so unfortunately that's all the time we have for this edition of the daily debate but before we go i'd like to thank my very distinguished guest dr mayor batron the political and technological foresight expert and board member of the egyptian red crescent dr batron always a pleasure having you with us thank you very much, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Safe. Thank you for joining us.